Welcome to the 23rd episode of the Frank Cho Crypto Show. If we haven't met before, my name is Frank Cho. I'm here to help you live a richer life. And on the weekend episodes of this channel, we talk about crypto topics in more depth as well as occasionally some XRPL specific projects. This week, I saw an interesting article in the Wall Street Journal that I thought would allow us to wax philosophical as we think about crypto, the road ahead, and where we stand as far as crypto goes. Let's just take a quick look through this and chat about what our thoughts are as we move into the future. Now, just a quick reminder, if you've missed any of the previous episodes, I'll put the full playlist in the video description. Keep in mind, these are just the Sunday episodes. Any of the other uh, news episodes that we normally do on a daily basis, you can find on the channel as well. So let's dive into it. This piece was called Crypto Prices Crashed, but True Believers Are Holding On. A divide is growing between investors looking to make money and those who believe in crypto's mission. This is going to take the perspective of a few individual investors in crypto, and as we read through it and chat, I'd like to know in the comments where you stand. Do you believe in the true mission of crypto or are you just here to get some gains and move on? I think either approach is honestly okay. But if you look to the long term and the real future, the opportunity is truly bright. And I think we'll see some massive movements through the rest of this decade that could change the way that finance is approached in the coming years and decades. Now, let's dive right into it. Crypto prices, we know, have dived this year, but Drew Larson, who they talked to here, has no concern. Over the past two years, this 54-year-old has poured about 10% of his savings into cryptos like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Solana. He believes it's a smart hedge for his investment portfolio, the rest of which is in real estate, stocks, and bonds. But more than that, he feels a deep connection to the idea of digital assets, which makes the pain of Bitcoin's plunge this year a lot more bearable. <laughs> Pun intended? I don't know. But uh, it's interesting. So he's taken a 10% position of his total net worth, which I think is probably right around the high end you would want to be. Uh, you want a diversified portfolio no matter what. Crypto should be an allocation that you don't put all your eggs in that basket because of the volatility. But having some allocation is definitely a wise choice. That uh, 5 to 10% is probably a pretty decent uh, allocation, especially since he has uh, stocks, bonds, real estate, staying diversified. But as he says here, I actually do think it has the potential to save the world. Now, he's a founder of two software companies and lives in Colorado with his family. But this year, his crypto holdings have lost about 40%. Now, it is a touch unfair to say only uh, crypto is the industry or asset class feeling the bite. Here's a nice chart where they show the S&P, the NASDAQ, and Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Solana. Now, everything's come down. Bigger dive in cryptos, but also a bigger bounce here as we move up with this nice little um, lift we've seen over the couple of weeks here in July. Now, continuing with what they have to say, with the market crashing, there's a growing divide between investors who are looking to make money and those who believe in its mission. Some true believers, like Larson, tout crypto as a way to replace or at least push back against big banks and the traditional fiat money system. Others are more enthusiastic about blockchain, a kind of digital ledger underpinning cryptocurrencies that could be used to change how records are tracked and stored in areas as, val as varied as medicine and real estate. Now, for us here on this channel in particular, I think we have an excitement for both. Uh, we've seen, and even just this week, and if I had it up, I'd show you, but in Colombia, Ripple has been partnering to make the XRP ledger available for that land registry, and they had the very first one they showed uh, just this week. So real estate, that's a big opportunity. You think globally, how do we track ownership of real property? And the process that exists now with titling all these intermediaries, 
the blockchain provides opportunities to optimize that. So it's not just when it comes to money, but you have real estate. They talk about medicine here. There's so many other real world use cases, authentication of other assets. So it's cool to see these use cases be built out. And on top of that, you look at a company like Ripple, what they're doing, and you think about the asset XRP and how that can be used to bridge multiple currencies and help move money faster around the world. This is where that real revolutionary uh, capability comes in with digital assets. And I think this is where you really get the true believers is there's so much room to optimize in this sector. We've seen optimization with uh, e-commerce, like with Amazon. Think about how Amazon has changed the world when it comes to getting something ordered online to your doorstep and the uh, shortening of that amount of time and the cost. That same kind of optimization can happen in the world of finance where you reduce these transaction times, you lower the costs, you make the availability much greater to where anybody can have access to this system. You open up these corridors and then you have this free flow of money, which will also help impact the free flow of goods and services globally. It's really cool. It's really exciting. And so the true believers in the space see that long-term vision and that's what gets them excited. And it's good that the Wall Street Journal is pointing this out. You know, so much um, or so often the media likes to highlight the, the pump and dumps or the bros that are there just to get their Lambo and their Rolex and move on or whatever. But if you see and catch the vision of what can be the, uh, the future of money, the future of value on the internet and this transfer and uh, verification of ownership, it's really cool. So continuing here, some of the traders knuckling down on crypto are fairly where, uh, well off, which means they have money to lose and a higher tolerance for risk. Many, including Larson, didn't have their investments tied up in lending platforms like Celsius or Voyager, which have both frozen withdrawals and filed for bankruptcy protection. Customers there haven't been able to access their money for weeks. Some investors buy cryptos as if they're stocks holding them in an exchange and hoping prices rise so they can make a profit. Others deposit their crypto into yield earning accounts with firms that then invest those assets or lend them out to others for a fee. Bitcoin, the biggest crypto, is riding the wave of July's market rally. It's up about 28% in July, but it's still down about 65% from its high last November. Maria here is a 31-year-old software test engineer in California. She said she views most cryptos as hyped-up assets with little legitimate value. But in March, after the market had already endured a few uh, rough months, she started buying the two biggest cryptos, Bitcoin and Ethereum, and has invested about $8,000 total. She says the plunge in prices makes it a great time to buy on the cheap. She bought $1,000 in Ethereum on Thursday when leading cryptos rallied after the Fed's interest rate increase. Like Mr. Larson, she said she supports stricter regulation on the crypto market. She thinks it would give the industry more legitimacy and probably give a boost to her holdings. Her other long-term investment strategy? Handbags. She recently paid $10,000 for a black Hermes Kelly bag and plans to cash out the investment when she nears retirement. Until then, the gold-plated bag sits in her closet, resting in its original cloth bag and stuffed to keep its shape. Interesting. So when you think about crypto investors, there's a wide variety, right? You've got an older gentleman with experience in software making investments that he believes in for the long term. This other individual thinks maybe there's not a ton of value, but sees it for its investment potential, interested in diverse asset classes. Uh, luxury goods actually can be a really great investment. Handbags and watches and things like that over time can grow at even a higher rate than some of the more traditional financial assets. Uh, art, so that's another great asset class. So it's interesting to see who gets excited about crypto and why. And I'll give another example here. Zachary, a 25-year-old real estate investment analyst in Chicago, has put about 10% of his investment portfolio into Ethereum and lesser-known cryptos like Chainlink and Polygon. 
Uh, Mr. Bertucci, so that's this gentleman, started buying crypto back in September when prices were still on the way up. His holdings have lost about half their value, but he plans to keep buying more each month and hopes to eventually rake in enough gains to buy an investment property. That's money you're investing. It could go away or it could triple, he said. As long as you're willing to accept that risk, then you're okay. The other 90% of his investment portfolio is in stocks and an ETF that mirrors the S&P 500. So it's interesting, too, to see that there's other investors who want to get in, make some gains, and then shift and reallocate to a different asset class. You see here his investment property idea. Make some quick gains in crypto or even, you know, over a shorter period of time than we think of with some of the time horizons in crypto. So over that time, get some gains, then shift the gains into an investment property with the hope that that will have a stable value and grow over time and bring in some cash flow. So it's an interesting approach and everyone's approach is different. Let me know what you think in the comments. What is your approach to crypto? Are you in it just for quick gains? Are you in it because you believe in the long-term value and you're going to hold for as long as it takes to see this change really happen in the world? Or are you going to collect some gains, shift them to other assets, and build a more diversified portfolio? I'm really curious what everyone in the community here is thinking of their crypto investments. But they continue, not all crypto believers are loading up. Uh, Tyler Lottie began investing in crypto in 2014, adding about $5,000 total in Bitcoin and Ethereum up until early this year. After the recent downturn, he doesn't plan to add, add any more. Still, he says he's bullish on the sector, and as an accountant, he has high hopes for smart contracts, which we know are software programs on the blockchain that automatically execute transactions between parties. If it does work out, it's beneficial to the world, and I'll make money, he said, Who's and he's 31 and lives in Georgia. So a nice swath of the population, both from an age, uh, demographic standpoint, and from a geographical standpoint. Now, going back to Mr. Larson, who they first discussed, the entrepreneur from Colorado, has experience dealing with risk. He co-founded a sales-related tech company in 1999. Interesting time to be in tech, right? Shortly before the dot-com bubble burst. Then he exited in 2009. He sold another venture, a crypto-based workout program or platform in 2019. The following year, he got into crypto partly because he didn't want to sit around doing nothing. Every month, he attends a crypto happy hour where topics can range from the price of Bitcoin to how to persuade your spouse to invest in it. Still, he said he doesn't believe most cryptocurrencies are for the average investor, likening crypto to investing in early-stage startups. The exception in his mind is Bitcoin. He views it as a long-term savings method, and he thinks one day he might hand down his Bitcoin holdings to his children. I guess I would say I came for the money, he said, but stayed because of the philosophy. So that's interesting. I'd love to hear some of your stories in the comments if you're willing to share. Did you come for the money and then stay because of the community? Or did you see the community get attracted to that and then begin investing? It's a really interesting question to ask and gauge where everybody stands. You know, when I first became interested in crypto, uh, it was because of the monetary aspect, of course, wanting to, to understand this new asset class investment and uh, where this was going to add value for me as an investor. But as I've grown more in the community, engaged more with people, especially in the XRP community, uh, I've really found a kinship with uh, everyone who has a similar mindset and has this vision of the future. And it's exciting to me that we are able to communicate from across the globe and share ideas and thoughts about uh, what future developments could happen with crypto and where we see things going in the future. Uh, we are definitely in an incredible time where there's a lot of opportunity, and I think crypto opens up the doors to many of the other advancements that we'll see in the future that sort of reshape the way we think, act, and uh, view our world in the years to come. So do let me know your thoughts down below. I am very eager to hear uh, the opinions and takes of everybody uh, that has a chance to see this. So thank you for spending some time here with me this weekend. I do truly appreciate it. Drop a like if you found any value here and make sure you stay tuned for future episodes on Sundays for the Frank Cho Crypto Show. Subscribe so you don't miss out. And also our daily news updates throughout the course of the normal week. 
Thank you so much for spending some time here with me. I do truly appreciate it. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.